Welcome to another Ben McGreevy Sports Podcast. Today is like the most exciting one of the year. Uh, and it is because it is finally playoff time uh, in the National Hockey League. We have the Stanley Cup playoffs upon us. And of course, as everyone does, we are going to be predicting who we think is going to win. What you can do with this is you can then listen to this make fun of us actively on Twitter uh, and say that we're a bunch of idiots. And then when we prove you wrong, because we're all obviously going to be right, we will then call you an idiot. But in reality, we will probably miss most of these because that's just the way the Stanley Cup playoffs work. But it's fun to talk about it. Uh, We are recording this on Sunday, April the 16th. The playoffs do start on Monday. uh, And so we're excited to get into that like this it's like Christmas, the day of the NHL playoffs. I'll probably wear an NHL jersey to work tomorrow just to be rebellious, right? That is something I'm blessed with in my job. Uh, but let's let's go ahead and, and get started into kind of some content today. The playoffs this year are very, some cool matchups. Uh, I'm just like, is this the most exciting playoffs we've seen in recent years? Why or why not? I just kind of want to throw that out there Heath what do you think most interesting playoffs you've seen of late yeah I mean you've got a lot of teams that are I think equally matched um you know I think the last few years you've seen a lot of you know first round matchups going pretty easily one way so I think this year at least you've got a little bit of uh competition in the first round it's not just I mean you granted you always had those those a couple series that you know the two and three seeds that were always really good matchups but this year yeah you've got really good really good series here Paul what are your thoughts on that yeah I'm it's weird my excitement for this playoff season given that our team the Predators is not in it but it almost makes it more fun because I care less about having to put my focus all on one team um, in that aspect so it's going to be fun just to casually watch all of these games and yes, I'm rooting for certain teams, uh, but I don't have to care as much. So, and, and I think the matchups are awesome. So I it's going to be a fun time. Keep who you're rooting for in the back of your mind, because I want to know later on wh- who you're rooting for. And, and Heath, you as well, uh, who you're cheering for. If you're kind of cheering for a team or if you're just rooting for chaos or whatever it is. Uh, for me, I think this is specifically in the East the most exciting playoffs that we've had in a long time outside of one series. Um, But I think that the Eastern conference series are such toss ups, uh, even one that maybe isn't a toss up. Uh, But like, I, I I think that it it is going to be a super, super fun playoff year. Uh, Oh, also as we, before we get into going through each team, here's what you need to do as well. We have a, a bracket challenge that you can join if and it's a league so it's open to the public if you want to join that bracket challenge go ahead and hit the link in the description of this podcast and uh you can join that join with your team um all three of us have submitted a bracket into that and so what you can do is just compare how your bracket is going to compare to us um and and that way you can really trash talk us if you beat us all right Here's what we're going to do. We're going to get into these series, and we're not going to go in a particular order. I do have an order that we're going to go through. It's not going to be based on what things look like. Uh, but we're going to look at um, where does this rank, like, an excitement to you. So, like, where on a scale of, like, you're most excited for this series or you're least excited for this series, what are you looking forward to uh, in this series? And then also I want to hear what are your key factors for each team to win um, and then who is your winner of the series? Why or why not? Uh, and we'll just spend a couple minutes on each of these. And we're going to start out in the Western Conference with one that, uh, honestly, I'm pretty excited for, the Los Angeles Kings and the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, this is a fun series that if you would have told us at the beginning of the year we're getting this one, we would have all been in. It's a rematch from last year's first round. Uh, a different storyline this year for sure. How do you guys see this series playing out? What is the key for each team in this series? Well, go ahead, Cole. No, you go. You got it. All right. Um, 
for this one, I think it's just – I I really like what the Oilers did at the deadline, but same with L.A. Kings. Um, obviously, they got rid of Quick, so that, but Quick really wasn't going to be their starter in, in net. Um, but I think this one really comes down to can Edmonton generate more scoring other than their top line? And I, with Ekholm on the D side now for uh, – Edmonton, they're playing really well. 9 0 1 their last 10. I think they're hot going in here. Um, I think, you know, I, it, it's going to be a pretty good series, but I think it's this, this will be a, a tough matchup for Edmonton. One that I think they probably, you know, when you think about the Kings, especially going into the season, you know, they probably would make playoffs, but they wouldn't be as competitive as they probably are right now. And uh, I think this will be a pretty tough matchup for either team. I agree. Um... And are we saying who we're taking in this series? Yeah, we'll we'll end each little segment with who we're taking. Okay, cool. So I, I think Edmonton's just going to overpower LA offensively. Um, of course, goaltending can tell a lot of stories in the playoffs. But, I mean, looking at the goal differentials for both of them um, through the season, Edmonton was plus 65 and LA was plus 25. They're both in the positive, obviously. But um, there's a big gap there. Um, and I know, like Heath said, a lot of that is on the top line. So will their depth scoring help them out in this uh, long run to the Stanley Cup? We'll see. Yeah, I, I this series is one that I'm very excited for. Uh, it, it's probably in my top three most excited for series. I'm going to stay up late to watch these games. because That's I the am, worst part. <laughs> it is. It Literally, the fact that it's a late night game is the worst part. But I think it's worth staying up for. Because what you have is a team in the Los Angeles Kings who's very fun. You have some older players mixed with some younger players mixed with some mid-experienced players. And they're going up against uh, a playoff Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. Um, For me, the biggest question is going to be, does Edmonton get the goaltending? But Heath, you brought this up. They're 9-0-1 in their last 10. They're hot, hot, hot. This is where you want to be going into the playoffs. For me, you have the best player in the world, one of the other top five players in the world. And I'm going to throw this out there. Heath, you brought this up as well with the Ekholm trade. The the Matias Ekholm trade to um, the Edmonton Oilers is huge. Matias Ekholm, since arriving in Edmonton, guys, is plus 28. Plus Crazy. 28. Let me in in how many games you might be asking? That's in 21 games. Echo what was he? Do we know what he was in Nashville? All he season? was even, even zero. Okay, uh, through Nashville. Wow. Uh, if you sit there and look at at him, and you say, okay, who is he? What does he add to this? He has stability. He has playoff experience. Uh, I, I'll go ahead and start the who I'm taking here. I'm taking the Oilers, uh, and. And I, I'm going to, I think it's going to be in like five or six games. I think it's going to be pretty easy. I just don't know that the LA Kings have enough playoff experience to handle the high power of the Edmonton Oilers. Who are you guys taking in how many games? Oilers and six. Same, Oilers and six. Where do you guys rank this series as like interest level for you? In the Western Conference, it is probably. It's going to be my favorite series of the first round. Um, the sucky part is it's on the West Coast. So that means some nights, if I'm going to watch the games, I'm going to be up till midnight. Um, but like you said, this is going to be a series that's going to be worth watching. So uh, I'm excited for it. Especially the extended highlights at a minimum, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I think this will be a really good – West out of the Western Conference, this is probably the best series they've got going on right now. Um, right right so. now, by the way – he, did you say that? Well, you haven't given your prediction yet. Who did you? Yeah, yeah no, he Oilers said six. six. Oilers, Oilers, six. Sorry, I totally missed that. Right now, LA Kings fans are like, We hate you. We think you're all idiots. Like, Kings are an underdog. And you might be right, but it's just hard at this point in his career to bet is, against Connor. Is Kevin Davis. Fiala still hurt for the Kings? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. That throws a major wrench into their whole. I don't know I, if he, he he did not practice yesterday. Um, 
so they don't we we don't really know where Fiala lies. That I mean that that's a big deal, you know. Yeah, I, I think and that that speed to the table. So, but I even with Fiala at, in, I'm still taking Edmonton. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're stepping over to the next series that we're going to discuss now. We're moving over to the East, and we're going to go to the New York Rangers versus the New Jersey Devils. This is a fun one as well, and uh, and I'm interested on what do you guys think? What are the keys for each team to win this series? Where do you see some strengths, weaknesses, things like that? Yeah, I was telling Heath uh, before the podcast started that this might be my favorite series of the first round in the East, uh, just because you have the Hughes brothers versus the superstardom that New York has. Um, so it, it's going to be a fun matchup. I have, if we're going to go ahead and do prediction, I have the Rangers in six, um, just based off their very heavily offensive powering. And I, I don't know if New Jersey is going to be able to keep up with that. Plus, they've got great goaltending. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's kind of the same points there. Um, obviously, most people probably know by now, I, I'm a big Shesterkin fan. So um, I'm biased towards the Rangers here. But I think this would be a really good series. I think this series possibly, I think possibly goes seven games. Um, this is this will be a fun but a long series for both teams. Both either team could take this series. A lot of it's going to depend on the Devils' goaltending and can they actually figure out Shesterkin um, with what the Rangers did at the deadline, acquiring Kane and then obviously uh, what's his name Tarasenko from uh, St. Louis. Yeah, my brain is currently just collapsing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, with Tarasenko, I think they'll if they can get some guys not, you know, really producing for them um, and what the experience they have, uh, the de- what the Devils really de- don't have um, recent playoff experience outside of their – I think they had a Stanley Cup playoff experience maybe in 2016 or something. Then they had the finals run way back when with Martin Berger. Um, so I just feel like this is a – this is really the Rangers series almost to lose, even though they're coming in at – at a lower seed. I tend to agree with you. Ah, oh, man. I, this is a tough one for me. He, here's why this is a tough one for me. You look at how these teams have been playing coming into the playoffs, and the Rangers have struggled down they the have. stretch. Uh, they have not been consistent. If you They're 5-2-3 and three, um, versus New Jersey, who's kind of hot, 7-3-0. and oh. I mean, that that is – that's different. It took a while for Patrick Kane to get heated up with the Rangers as well. So, uh, I mean, yeah, it's been a couple months since the trade deadline, but there's there's a lot of new pieces to that team. And that's and I almost wonder if the Rangers tinkered too much. Now, let me throw this out there: the Rangers clearly are the better roster, and to me, the difference here is going to be uh, is going to be between the pipes. This is, this is my take on this series. I think <sighs> this is, uh, Shashurkin versus Vanacek and Vanacek it has been okay this year. Um, but if I told you right now, you have to choose Vanacek or Shashurkin in a playoff series, who do you take? Shashurkin. Every day. And, <laughs> So I tend to lean Rangers, but I also have watched this Devils team this year, and I think they're maybe a little bit hungrier. Like, for some reason, I sense a desire to win more in the Devils. So this is one that – I'll be transparent. I have not chosen my bracket yet. This could change by the time I post my bracket. I feel the Rangers winning this series for some reason. I mean, I feel the Devils winning this series for some reason. It could happen. But I Shesterkin can't be on. Shesterkin has not had the best year either. Uh, for gonna, his yeah, I was going to say, he has not had a very great season compared to what he did last year. So, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go Devils in seven as well. I think this is a long series. I like uh, this, it. I think this is probably my number one most interesting series in the first round. Uh, it is, it is going to be so fun. I've been looking forward to it for months now. 
we knew that this was probably going to be the matchup. And so I it ended up working out. I'm here for it. I'm ready for it. And I'm I'm excited to see how this one plays out. All right, let's move on now to back to the Western Conference. We're going to jump over to the Dallas Stars versus Minnesota Wild. We'll go through this one kind of quickly. Uh, what are the keys for each team? Where do you think some teams have advantages versus the other? Go for it, Heath. All right, so um, with Dallas, obviously they've got pretty good goal tuning, pretty good lineup. Um, you know, I think a lot of it's going to rely on – on Dallas, can they actually get some scoring outside of, you know, Tyler Sagan and things of that nature, just not outside of their top line? Robo um, Sagan? Uh, I, wait, see what you, you just said say again, and it sounded like Sagan. And that's pretty funny because we're talking about the Dallas Stars. <laughs> that, that, that was, <laughs> and you're sitting in Dallas, Texas right now. I don't know if that I am. I don't know sure. if I'm going to go. I'm not, I'm probably not going to the Stars game tomorrow night. Uh, I mean, <laughs> um, sorry. But yeah, go ahead. I said but, Robocop. Uh, I was referencing oh, Jason Robinson. Robinson yeah. 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 Um, but I really think they're going to have to get scoring out of other people other than their top line. Um, they're going to have to get defense, obviously. And I, I and they're going to have to get, you know, their goal team they've gotten all year. Um, obviously, Elmark's a great goaltender, but we'll see how he handles kind of being in this pressure-packed, you know, Stanley Cup playoffs where this team at the moment, uh, when they ended the season, could possibly be a favorite for the Stanley Cup, depending on who you ask. Um, so I, I foresee this series going to Dallas in six, but – you know, it just mo mostly because Minnesota doesn't do well in the playoffs. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna go quickly on mine. I have two things. One, his name is Jake Ottinger. I think that Jake Ottinger is the difference maker here. Uh, just his age, his ability, really good. And the other is record leading in and style of play leading in. Dallas Stars have been hot, uh, and I take the hot team almost every time. So I'm going with the Dallas stars and five or six. I think it's a quick one. One. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, oh, go ahead. One quick tidbit. I just said Linus Hallmark again, my brain has nothing in it except for airplane stuff. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. I I've got Dallas and six. I think this one's going to be pretty cut and dry there. Um, goal differential for the year was 50 points more than the wild. Um, outside of the Kirill Kaprizov, I mean, you've got Zuccarello and Matt Boldy, but other than that, there's no one else that really scores. They're almost like the Predators last year where they had two 40-goal scores and then the rest of the team just kind of trickled down. So um, I, I just think Dallas is going to wear the Wild down pretty good. So Dallas and six. I, yeah, I, I think this one's actually pretty easy. Um, it's very interesting. The one one other stat, uh, to keep in mind is that if you look at these teams record against each other leading in, I believe both of Minnesota's wins um, were in overtime, unless I have that backwards and I lost the stat. And so, uh, but I think it was like one of them was two and two and oh versus the other one. And the other one was two oh and two. So that would make it where, um, where it was literally a thing where it was like, and I think, I think Dallas was the one who lost uh, in, in overtime both times. So that is something to keep in mind as well. All right. By the way, this series for me, bottom three, for sure. And in interest level. Same. We're going to move on to one that, that is going to be, uh, to me, this one's very interesting. Uh, it's the Florida Panthers against the president's trophy winning Boston Bruins. This one's very difficult for me. And for you guys, I don't think it is. Go ahead and you guys have a pretty similar opinion on this because we were talking before. And what do y'all what are y'all thinking on this series? So yeah. I, I'm writing off Florida. I know they have Sergey Bobrovsky and he's been decent this year, but he's not been fantastic. And he's um, not starting. It's Eric you're right. Lyon. That um yeah, you're right. It is Alex Lyon. Um 
even him though, I mean, he's 14, nine and four, nine, one, four save percentage. I, I just don't see Florida overpowering the Boston Bruins. Boston's offense is going to annihilate anything that Florida tries to do. Um, and all Mark's been playing incredible. He's probably going to win the Vesna. So, which Soros should win the Vesna, but uh, that's a story for another day. Um, but Boston and five, I'll just hold my comments there. Yeah, I'm pretty much on the same same window here with with Cole. But with that being said, I think Panthers could still, you know, make this an interesting series. Um, they started to play better down the stretch, um, but I, I just don't foresee this Boston team giving much slack to uh, the Panthers in terms of I think they're just going to probably do this in about five games. Boy, Granted, you guys... if, if David Posternock tears his ACL or something, then Panthers will win. The dude has 61 goals this year. Let me let me tell you this. Obviously, the stats and everything else say choose Boston. Choose them. Choose, choose them. the Bruins. Choose them. Choose them in five. Choose them in four. Why not? But guys. My heart. I feel a heart beating in my chest. I hope so. For the Florida, <laughs> for the Florida, <laughs> I'm I'm alive for the Florida Panthers, guys. <laughs> I I will tell you, if I'm the Boston Bruins, the team I didn't want, I'll take Toronto all day long if I'm the Boston Bruins. Bring them on. I'll take Tampa all day long if I'm the Bruins. Bring them on. You know who I would really love to have? I would love to have the Carolina Hurricane if I was the Boston Bruins. Give me the Islanders. Give me anyone. You know I don't want? I don't want the Florida Panthers. Why, Ben? The Florida Panthers have been struggling to get into the playoffs for weeks. They are sitting in a situation where they have been playing meaningful games for weeks on end. And I will tell you this. Eric Lyons been winning. Matthew Kachuk is a winner. Barkov is one of the best players in the world. Ekblad, phenomenal. Brooks Kepka is probably going to be in the house. And Brooks Kepka was almost a master's champion. But you know Therefore, what Brooks Kepka is? A loser, just like the Florida Panthers. <laughs> Maybe so. I'm taking Florida in uh, in six games. I think this is going to be a six. shocking. I love I, it. I love that pick from you. I, I, I mean, think that if it goes game seven, that Boston wins. But but I I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the uh, Florida Panthers in six. It's gonna be wild. They're they're out for blood after next year. They the the battle got them there. So so that is where I am. I'm I'm ready for this series. I'm gonna be tuning in. I mean, you would think at some point Boston's winning way has to go away i mean they have to crack at some point i think i've taken them to win the stanley cup the past eight years every time we do this podcast i've taken the boston bruins to win the stanley cup but guess what we'll 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 wait on that (laughs) sounds good hey let's move on to our next series that we're going to discuss uh it is it is let's go ahead and talk about colorado and seattle uh this is (sighs) probably There's something about this series that doesn't scream exciting to me, but it should. Um, this series has an ex- a second-year expansion team making their first-ever Stanley Cup run. We're going to see Seattle in the playoffs for the first time ever. Um, we have the former Stanley Cup champion coming in, uh, and yet I'm not super eager to watch this one, but I should be. I'm sure, and I think it's just because it's out west, right? It's a, It's not our territory. It's in a different part of the world. Uh, for me, Seattle's going to have to get goaltending. They're going to have to get defense, and they're going to have to get depth scoring with a bunch of guys that don't have a ton of playoff experience. Versus Colorado, who won the Stanley Cup last year. What do you guys see out of this series? What are the keys for each of these teams? Uh, I know that Colorado is going to be without Landeskog, and are they all with out with Kel McCarr too. Kel McCarr has been. I bet he will be playing. 
If okay, so it. Landis Gog is for sure out though, right? Yep. So it, I still think Colorado is going to take this series. I'm taking Colorado in six, and let me tell you why. Um, looking down. Hey, McCar- McCar's, yeah, definitely back. Okay, well then, yeah, Colorado in six sounds good. I all, almost took him in five. Um, but just looking at the stat lines of both teams, um, I don't know if Philip Grubauer's or Martin Jones's goaltending is going to really get it done for Seattle um, in the long run. So it, I think I, I watched Nathan McKinnon this week destroy the Nashville Predators with a hat trick to just crush our souls to end our season. And it, Colorado and six. That's all I need to say. Um, so for Seattle, he have any any chance. They're going to have to get goaltending. I mean, whether it be Grubauer or Jones. And the thing with Jones is you can get the really dumpy Jones or you can get the really good Jones. <laughs> so I think for them, it's going to be goaltending. I think Colorado takes this in five. That's all I got, really. I, I think I'm going to stick with Colorado in six. Uh, simply because I think Seattle will win a couple games at Seattle. I think that they're just going to say, hey, we're going to win for our fans. They'll win a couple. But you know, there are some series that are six games where they're not ever close. That's this one. It's not yeah. going to be close in reality, right? Nashville lost to Carolina in six in 2021. They essentially got swept in that series. It was never yeah. going to happen. Right. So that, and I say that they obviously lost in playoffs or in overtimes, but like it just wasn't going to happen. It wasn't realistic. So that, that is, is my thought there uh, on that series. All righty. Let's keep going. Now we are going to get to the Carolina versus New York Islanders. Uh, <laughs> wah, wah, wah. This series sucks. I, I think that this is one of the most miserable series in the world to watch. You guys might totally disagree. I'll explain why in a minute. Let me hear your thoughts. I hate to preface it with that, but I had to. What do you guys think about this series? I think this – it's a boring series, I think. Um, at New York, they squeaked into the playoffs. The Islanders, for some reason, are every year a pesky team in the playoffs. But I don't foresee them really having a chance against Carolina. I think Carolina is too well coached. Um, but it's going to depend on Carolina's goaltending. I don't, I don't think Freddie Anderson's had a great year. And I forgot who else they have. Darcy Kemper. Um, I think – I don't remember anymore. I have too much on my mind. So, yeah, those guys, the people in the black and the red, those are the winners. Wow. I agree. Okay. Yeah, I I agree. I'm taking Carolina in six. Let me tell you why. Um, So Carolina is probably going to start. They're going to start anti Ronta, right? They've got to. You you would think so. I would think they would start him over Freddie Anderson. Um, The only playoff experience Freddie Anderson has is losing in the first round of the playoffs. So, um, well, anti Ronta probably isn't much better, but. I think Carolina is just going to overpower the Islanders. Kind of like Heath said, the Islanders keep squeaking into the playoffs. um, But I think Carolina is just too good of a team to lose in the first round. So I've got Carolina in six. Like Heath said, I'm not really interested in the series this much, but it's an Eastern time zone series. And I'm probably going to watch it because it's going to be the early game of the night. So um, playoff hockey, let's go. Hey, I would not be shocked if Freddie Anderson is the starter in that series, by the way. I bet they will use them back and forth like they've done all season. Uh, guys, I hate to tell you this, but you're both wrong. Um, Love it. Yeah, so so the, the winner of this series is actually the New York Islanders. Why, Ben? Uh, and it's because the Hurricanes have limped into the playoffs. They're injured. They don't have their full team available. Uh, and it comes down to one thing for me, and it's style of play of the New York Islanders 
and a man named Ilya Sorokin. Yeah. And I oh God, think it's really good. I think that the Islanders, are you guys ready for this? This is my, they win in four or five pick. I think they run over Carolina. I think this is a year that the Carolina Hurricanes are forced to make some decisions because it's going to be like, they've had some decent runs, but nothing really actually that great. And they're going to have to decide what they do with this team. And, uh, and the smart thing is to keep it together, I think. But I'll tell you, I I don't think they're going to win in the first round this year. And the Islanders, once again, have been battling, 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 battling. And they have the better goalie. And in the playoffs, the better goalie wins. And they're not the Vancouver Canucks, as was lovingly said by Bo Horvat in his interview. I don't know if you guys saw that. That was epic. Yeah. Uh, you, you might have me changing my mind on that game just because of goaltending, but we'll see. It's going to be a game time decision. Yeah. That one I was, I mean, I was pretty, I'm still split on it. I still think Carolina wins, I think, but the Islanders, the way they play every year in the playoffs when they make it, they find a way to challenge their opponent pretty well. Guys, I'm going to tell you something that as of right now, unless I change this, I have the Islanders going to Stanley Cup final. <laughs> are you are you kidding me? I, I've got to – I've it's not right. I'm gonna go change that. I've got to change it. I just can't decide because if they this, get through the first round, there's something about the Islanders where they don't lose. Yeah. And I I just can't I can't figure them out. They're not gonna go to the Stanley Cup final, but for some reason right now, like I like their matchups. Um, especially with I have, in there. I have the Rangers winning in the second round of the playoffs so i don't need that to happen hey i'll tell you this a rangers islanders matchup would be awesome that would be amazing too bad they're not in nassau coliseum anymore for the islanders hey their new building is is a beaut though Uh, all right let's keep going let's keep rolling with this uh let's step into the vegas golden knights versus winnipeg jets series for a moment this is a fun one in the west i genuinely think this is one of the more fun series um that we're gonna get to see and i don't i don't know why i think it's gonna be a fun one but it's gonna be fun to see vegas back in the playoffs and see their fans back in their building what do you guys think about this series what are some keys for each team going into this playoff series I, I think this one, you know, we always, we still say every time goaltending, right? Yep. It's a big thing when it gets in the playoffs. I like, the only thing I don't care for on the Edmonton, Edmonton sign is their goaltending. Um, everything else I'm happy with. Wait, when you say Edmonton. What are we doing? What are, or, yeah, yeah, why is my thing messed up? Hang on. Mine shows Vic. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. Wrong, wrong. Uh, by the way, for listeners who don't know, Heath is in the midst of some pretty intense training right now. And so the fact he's even here doing this shows you his dedication and love of the game. Okay. Um, so this is, this is where he is. He has said, uh, Linus Olmark tonight instead of, uh, I, I forget who we were talking about. We were talking, I, was, I meant to mention, um, but I think it was it was uh Dallas Stars goal. Jake Gottinger. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we've had a few statements like calling the uh the Edmonton Oilers the Winnipeg Jets and vice versa. Well, to be know. fair, I was looking at my second round matchup. I just saw Vegas. Uh but yep. yeah. Um <sighs> Winnipeg. Oh man. Um golly. Okay, uh, Vegas, uh, yeah, I think they win. That's all I'm going to say because I'm my brain is completely just French fried at the moment. I can go. Um, I also said Vegas in six, and here's why Vegas is going to win in six. Um, their goaltending is okay. Honestly, Connor Hollebuck is better. He's had a good season. Um, Logan Thompson and Aiden Hill are pretty much the same goaltender this year. Logan Thompson's out. Okay, well, Aiden Hill. Um, and nope. then Jonathan Quick. Jonathan Quick. You think Quick is going to start? Oh, hundred percent. Jonathan Quick is is their savior. Jonathan Quick <laughs> is why they're dominating this playoff series. Well, between Jack Eichel, Jonathan Marchessault, Riley Smith, 
I'm still taking Vegas in six. I think it's going to be too much unless Connor Hallibuck stands on his head, which we have seen him do before. Uh, and he's had a great season. So okay. it's going to be interesting to watch. Bill Kessel, guys. Bill, Bill Kessel is, is a is a Vegas Golden Knight. Get him a hot dog. And Bill, <laughs> Bill the Thrill is is – going to sit there on that third and fourth line and be a beast. Not in all seriousness. I think that the offensive prowess of the Vegas golden Knights is too much. And I think Jonathan quick is a different person in the playoffs. Let's not pretend that he wasn't the reason that the LA Kings didn't win two Stanley cups 10 years ago, you know, and he's an older guy now, but that doesn't, I think he still has that heart inside. Why do I keep pounding my chest uh, tonight? I, he has that heart inside of him. He's a competitor. He has what it takes to step up in the big moments, and he really saved the Vegas season this year. He was a big part of, of who they were, uh, for sure. All right, uh, let's let's keep going and and close this bad boy out. One more series. It's a big one. Let's talk the Toronto Maple Leafs versus Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, I'll go first on this one. Go first. Uh, just to get us started out. I think this series is one of the most exciting series that we're ever going to get to watch. You have the experience of Tampa versus the hunger of the Toronto Maple Leafs. They have not won a series. Starvation. All they want is to win a series. Austin Matthews is so great. Mitch Marner, William Nylander, Morgan Riley, Ryan O'Reilly for crying out loud. These great players. The OG Leafs can't win a round of the playoffs. And it's going to be exciting to see this iteration of the Leafs take on a Tampa team that's honestly pretty worn down. I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna save my prediction for after we kind of go through everything. Um, I think goaltending for Toronto is an issue. That could that could hurt them. I'll say that. Let's let's go ahead and and head around the horn a little bit though. So let let me tell you why Tampa is gonna win in seven games. Because until you give me a reason to think that Toronto can win a playoff series, I'm going to pick Tampa every year. This might be the year. And here's why. In my heart and soul, I'm speaking like Ben, in my heart and soul, Toronto has to win this series. Just looking head-to-head like Ben said, Tampa's tired. They are just battered from the storm of playoffs the past five years. And Toronto's not. They're fresh. They've got hungry people. And there is absolutely no way on this earth that they should lose this series to Tampa. But until they prove me wrong, I am taking the Tampa Bay Lightning in seven games. And golly, I'm going to enjoy this series so much. I love this series every year. Battle of the Blue. Battle of the Blue. Yeah, this will be – this is probably – the hardest series for me to decide on where I want to go with it. Um, because like, you, I mean, I'm in the same boat. You've got Toronto who, if there's a year to win a playoff series, and we've been saying this for, for them for the last, what seems like 10, 12, 15 million years, ages, decades. I don't know. That's what it feels like now. <laughs> um, this really is the year they should be winning a playoff series against a team that their goaltender in Vasilevsky in Tampa, who hasn't had a great season. It's, he hasn't performed up to his standards, in my opinion. Um, but he's a – it's just you, – it's so mm, – I want to pick Toronto really bad. Like, I mean, I really do. But part me of me too. Wants to say Vasilevsky is just going to come out and be Vasilevsky – in the playoffs, and so are so is this team that's been beaten up the last three years. But with that being said, I think Toronto takes it in seven games. That should be my pick, but it's not going to be. I'm not changing my pick. The Tampa Bay Lightning have been to the Stanley Cup final three years in a row. They've won it twice. They have players with the likes 
of Steven Stamkos. Nikita Kucherov, Braden Point, Victor Hedman, and I have not mentioned the man himself, Andre Vasilevsky. They have an intimidating building to play in. The best coach in the NHL. He's going to go down as one of the best in league history. The Toronto Maple Leafs, on the other hand, have B or C level goaltending. They have a bunch of overrated players because they exist in Toronto. The media is so aggressive. They have a morgue of a building. They can't win a playoff series. They're weak minded. And I think their coach doesn't have what it takes. I have picked Toronto. (laughs) Win oh, series <laughs> the last five years. Every year I'm like, no, this is the year. It's Montreal. I get what they will never lose to Montreal. Montreal's garbage. Is this their year, Ben? Guys, this, this is their year. This <laughs> is their year. They're gonna do it. Oh, I think. Man. I think. Let me hear me out. So Tampa's too tired. I, I think that Tampa, um, Tampa is just like. They're they're coming into the playoffs limping, it, it, like really limping. They're yeah. four six and zero in their last ten. Guys, I I I don't see a way. I don't see a way Toronto loses this. I, Ryan O'Reilly to me, goaltending is like the one way. Vasilevsky doesn't lose two games in a row in the playoffs. Ryan O'Reilly was a huge addition to the Toronto Maple Leafs because it gives them that little like, boom! I've been there, I've done it, I've won series. I think that's that's your chance. I, I think they win this series. I do want to bring in a question real quick from the YouTube comments. Uh, Andrew asks if the Leafs get eliminated in round one again. By the way, this 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 we're doing this here because it fits, and we're at this is our final series. If the Leafs get eliminated in round one again, where do they go from now? Do they blow up the team? Uh, what do you guys think? I. I think they have to and I know we've talked actually talked about this a little bit off the air but how long are you going to keep um this core Mitch Marner Austin Matthews William Nylander on and on together and not win it's the same kind of in a less big way kind of like the Preds we had to kind of blow up our roster this year because we've had the same core guys for the past six years and we just can't win a Stanley Cup so we dealt out some pieces, we're going to rebuild a little bit. If Toronto doesn't get past the first round, I think you're going to see one or two of those big names not there next year. Um, And Kyle Dubas, I would not want to be in his shoes uh, if if there's a first-round exit here. This is the last year of his contract? Yeah, I would not want to be in his shoes. He's gone. Let's think about this. Is this on Kyle Dubas? I don't think so. His team he has no. put together is so good. If if I'll say this, if Toronto had UC Soros, I think they'd win the Stanley Cup. I agree. And I, I agree. That can be the only GM flaw that I see in Dubas is that he hasn't been able to get a star goaltender in there. And that's what you have to have. And that's his fault because of how much money he has spent well, on Matthews, Martner, and Nylander and Tavares. I mean, yeah, I mean, he, they've, they've poured their entire – they basically put all their eggs into a few players and said, hey, go win a Stanley Cup, even though you ha- you're missing the key – one key component in gold. Sim- similar to the top line of the Oilers. I mean, Connor McDavid's the richest man in the NHL, but they don't – they, in recent years, haven't had a team around them to even make a run. Um, yeah. So I, I think that Dubas and Toronto will look a lot different if Toronto – gets out first round. I think if they lose in the first round, I think Sheldon Keefe is gone as well. I I think that Keefe has to be gone. Yeah. And I think you have to look to trade mm-hmm. somebody in the game. I, cool. I mean I'm talking Marner yeah. or Nylander for a goaltender. And, yeah, and I agree. And you're gonna have to pay that guy and probably some draft picks or prospects. And I they I mean I think they would have to do it. Um one other question Andrew asks is who do you think has the best chance in the East to beat Boston? I think this is a great question. If you had to choose one team to put in series against Boston to beat them, who's it going to be? 
Yeah, this is a great question. And I think who the team who has the best chance to beat Boston is the team that comes out on top of the Toronto Tampa series. Um, mm-hmm. Just because I think that series is going to say a lot um, versus the bottom half of the bracket. I don't see, I don't see the Rangers or Carolina or New Jersey beating Boston. Uh, I, I think for Boston, they win the cup if they get past the second round. So, interesting. I think, I think they win the cup if they get past the first round. By the way, uh, oh, do you know how much I want this? I so badly want Toronto to win that series and then have to play Boston in the second round and Toronto to be up 3 1 in the series and have Boston come back and win that. Se- oh, that'd oh. be awesome. I That's the storyline that. we're cheering for, guys. Uh, and saying that, I think of all the teams, I think Florida is the best shot to beat Boston. Um, I think it's the type of team that can do it, that gritty kind of gross team that has just fire in their bellies, a team that's like found it later in the year. Like they were way out of it earlier in the year and kind of came back into the picture. Um, To me, that's the team that can do it. Uh, if, if it's not Florida, it's no one. I, I think that that is a, a legitimate, uh, a legitimate thing. Um, all right, guys, let's, let's close this bad boy out. I do want to get, before we totally close it out, who are your Stanley cup champions? We'll just go around the horn. This is way too early. We're not going to necessarily hold you to this, who you pick to win the cup. Uh, Cole, let's go to you first. My pick to win the cup is the Boston Bruins for the 10th year in a row. So, and I'm serious this year. I mean, they're, they are, and I know the president's trophy is a curse, but this team is head and shoulders above everybody else in the league. I mean, it is not even close. It's like Colorado last year. The nobody was stopping them. And that is what Boston is this year. If they don't win, it's going to be a huge disappointment. So, it's got to be Boston. Heath, what about you? Who's your pick? Man, this one's this year's just tough. I want to pick Boston. This is going to be crazy. <laughs> so don't hold me to this pick. Dallas. <laughs> get, get out of here. <laughs> yeah, he moves to Dallas for a I couple know. months and becomes a Dallas Stars fan. That's You're a cool. Dallas homer now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Get out of here. Uh, that's That is – no. I have a theory behind it, and it's not, I'm not going to go into it. It's too we'll long. We'll get into it in the second round after they've been eliminated by the about Pete, Let's about do it. About we, Pete DeBoer, okay. We, we will now, read. There's we'll, a very we'll possibility. Circle. We're going to circle back to this. When, when Dallas loses in the first round and we have another podcast, we're going to circle back to your theory. Absolutely. But Absolutely. in my heart, I really want New York, the Rangers, to win. That would be epic. For yeah. the NHL, it would be epic. Uh, for me, I think for the first time in a long time, the Edmonton Oilers win the cup Maybe. and we have a Canadian team win it. I think that it's just going to happen. I really do. I, I think that this is their year. Um, that's just my perspective. And and I, I'm i feeling it. I think that they're hot and I think they have the, the skill and uh, I think that they can take on Boston. I think uh. they would look at Boston and say, Bring it, boys. Yeah, I had them actually losing to Boston in the Stanley Cup. That's how much I'm riding on Edmonton as well. Um, that's, that's I have them losing to Boston in seven. I think that would just be epic. That would be such a good series. All right, boys. Well, thank you guys for being a part of this. And if you watch to this point, thank you so much for, for being a viewer. Go ahead and submit those brackets uh, into the league so we can see uh, those things and you can compete against us uh, look at that Cole has the Boston Bruins Edmonton Oilers in his it's going to be an epic Stanley Cup playoffs uh, if you would uh, interact with us in the comments on this YouTube video let us know who you think is going to win in this playoff uh, this playoff race the Stanley Cup playoffs and we will see you uh, here in a few weeks for the round two podcast thanks for being here